Hi everybody, this is Virginia Milner coming to you for the DeKalb County Library System. And you know, I, I mentioned before that I always envy these people on YouTube who can do a tutorial and knock it out in half an hour. And I thought, how? Well, I'm going to try to do something like that. This is gonna be, I'm not gonna call it a quickie because I really don't know how long it's going to take, but I wanted to do something that was just for example, it is in the 90s right now, and that's pretty hot. So I wanted to do a really lightweight necklace that you could put on. It would look really pretty. I have done nothing with shells so far, for, um, which I usually try to do during um, the late spring and, and summer uh, season. So I am bringing out the shells, and we're going to use some mother of pearl see these rumbus shells and um, then some glass pearls and we're, we're going to make just a, a really pretty necklace that uh, I'll give you enough chain those of you who get kids so that you can make it longer if you want but I thought I would make something that would be really pretty just on the inside of a short sleeve shirt or a t-shirt or something like that that you can wear to the beach and it's not gonna weigh you down. So we're going to be using rhombus shells, um, glass pearls. These are the ones I'm using. That looks blurry. Anyway, glass pearls. Um, and I'm using um, eight millimeter. Where's my ruler? Pretty sure that these are eight millimeter. Um, and I'm going to give you either, those of you who get kits, It'll either be eight or 10 millimeter pearls. Um, these are, let's see here, five, six, seven, yes, eight, eight millimeter pearls. Um, the rumbus shells, which are gonna be all different shapes. It's not something that uh, they're all the same. They're all different shapes and sizes. They're uh, similar, but just, it's a shell, so. Um, and then we'll also have some small pearl beads um, that we'll use as a complement to the glass pearls. We'll be using um, a length of chain and um, a lobster clasp. Told you, this is going to be super simple. And to put my clasps on, I will be, we will be using jump rings. So, Let's go ahead and get started with that with our usual tools. Pulling out some jump rings here. We're gonna be using our round nose pliers as usual. They're rounded, the barrels uh, round all the way around. They get smaller, they taper smaller at the tip. I'm gonna hold these up together because sometimes I have people confuse the round and the square pliers and um, the square pliers are slightly rounded. They're also tapered, but if you look on the inside, you'll see that while the round nose pliers are the, the barrel of the round nose pliers is round all the way around, the flat or square pliers are completely flat on the inside. And if you buy these from the store, make sure you get the ones that don't have those ridges or those grips on the inside. Uh, because that can really chew up your, your wire when you're trying to work with it. The third thing that you're going to need is a pair of cutters, um, of wire cutters, and they do exactly what they say. They cut your wire, and they will also be uh, cutting your chain into the length that you want. Um, uh, and you'll need some jump rings. So you'll need the pliers, jump rings, chain, lobster clasp, your choice of beads. This little design that I'm going to do is very adaptable to different types of beads. You don't have to use shells. I just thought it would be pretty and in keeping with the seasons that we have in the United States right now. You'll also need a ruler to um, measure your wire. And last but not least, you will need 24 gauge wire. That is it. Let's go ahead and get down here to the other camera and get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to need to do is measure out a length 
of our 24 gauge wire. And the way, because we're using different uh, lengths to put this together, um, and you're going to be using different beads to put it together, what you need to know in regard to how much wire you need is you need a half inch or an inch on either on each side of your bead in order to make wrapped loops, which is what we're going to do. Slip a little bit here, uh, which is what we're going to do. So you you need whatever amount is needed to go through the bead, which would be the size of your bead plus an additional inch, half inch to an inch on each side. I would suggest those of you who get kits and those of you who do this on your own, you're going to have a length of wire and I would suggest you just leave it intact or cut it off um, at six inch in a, a, a pieces or something like that. So you'll have a little less, wa less waste. Because we're using shells, they're different sizes. And so they're not, you're not gonna be able to just cut um, a, a, several pieces of wire that are the same size. So you'll have to measure each piece as you go. So what I would suggest is just take a, a length of wire, um, six inches, 12 inches, something like that, and cut that and then use that to wrap your, your bead. Um, so again, Whatever the size is of your bead, in my case, my bead is about just under three quarters of an inch across, plus I need a half an inch to an inch on each side. I'm just gonna say two and a half inches. That'll give me a, about seven eighths of an inch on each side in order to create my wrap and the, the three quarters of an inch that I need for my bead. So that just in case you want to go ahead and cut it, that's how you would measure. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and you can either measure it or eyeball it. I'm going to give myself about half an inch to an inch away from the tip of my wire. I'm going to bend that wire back. Let's see if I can get a good, good view here. Okay, I'm going to bend the wire back from the tip. There we go, get a nice little focus in there. And slide my round nose pliers under one of the barrels under the short tail and the other tail and the other one on top so that the wire is in between. And then I'm going to bring that short tail of wire over the top of my pliers and down the side. Looks like it's trying to focus again. Hmm. Okay, and then I'm going to hold on to my wire and without shifting the wire, I'm going to reposition my pliers. I'm just gonna turn them back until I have space to bring this short tail of wire under the pliers until I have a loop. So there's my loop. Now, because I'm going to be attaching this to other links, I need to make sure that after I do this first one, the next ones have one, um, one side that's open so that I can attach it to the closed one. So I'm gonna go ahead and completely wrap this one. And look at um, the size of your loops. They don't have to be that big. I'm going to go down about a third of the way down my pliers because what I want to do is make sure or that my loops complement or are close to the size of the links in my chain so that it's not as apparent that, that it's something different that's a connector. If I can get it as close as I can get, it'll have a much more attractive appearance. So. Now I'm going to go ahead and hold on to what I call the face of my wire, which is just the flat part of my, my loop. And then I'm going to wrap that short tail around the long stem. Now, 
I see people try to do this really fast and they end up wrapping down the stem. You don't really want to do that. What I want is a nice wrap as close to the first one, as close to the pliers as possible and just use those pliers as a guide. So I'm gonna wrap that around there as close as I can get to the pliers that first time. And then the second wrap that I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do a couple. I'm gonna do that right below the first wrap. Just right below it with no spaces in between. So there's my wrapped loop. There we go, focus, 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 it's very good. So then after I've got my wrapped loop, I'm gonna snip off that little tail there, that little tip. Now I'm using pliers that are flat on one side. This is completely flat. They're concave on the other side, which means there's a little um, well or dip in between here. When I'm cutting my wire and I want to cut it as close to the wrap as possible, I'm going to use the flat side to do that. So I'm going to take that flat side, slide it all the way down as close to that wrap as I can get, just like that. You can see there's no space in there. And I'm gonna trim that off. And because it's such a short little tail, I'm gonna turn it down into the well of my little spool so that that little tip doesn't go flying all over the place. Okay, cut that off and push down the little tip as close as I can get to the wraps. I don't want that sticking up. And because this wire is so thin, and sometimes you're, my eye, now my eyes are, aren't perfect. So in order to check and make sure that there's nothing sticking up, I will use my, run my finger over it and see if I can feel the tip. If I can't feel the tip, I've done my duty. So now I'm gonna grab my, bead and I'm going to slide it on, find the drill part, there it is, slide my bead on and I'm going to wrap the other side. Okay, so again I'm going to bend my wire back and you want to bend it, I want to bend it back as close to the bead as I can get. Just give it a nice little bend there like that. And I noticed how I used my hands. I didn't use my pliers because if you use your pliers, you're going to end up with a big gap in between the bead and the bend in your wire. Okay. And now a lot of little tips here. Which is what I like to be able to do. Okay. Now I'm going to grab my pliers and I'm going to slide the bottom um, barrel under my wire and the top barrel on top of my wire. So my wire is nicely encased. Just slide it down about a third of the way down my pliers. Again, I don't need a great big loop. And then I'm going to bring that wire over the top of my pliers and down the side until I can't go any further. Okay, then I'm gonna open up my pliers reposition them on top, just over the bead, and then bring that wire the rest of the way around until I have a loop. Now I can see that I have a little bit of space in here that I don't want. So in order to get rid of that, I'm just going to rotate the, root, the loop until it's resting right on top of my bead, thereby getting rid of that little space. And now I'm ready to wrap. Now, you, there are two ways that you can do this. You can leave this in the loop and wrap around, but I personally like to hold on to it with my square pliers. I think I have a little more control when I do it that way. And then just wrap it around first time. 
and the second time right on top of my little bead. And there's my first wrapped bead or wrapped loop. Well, second wrapped loop, really. And I'm going to clip off that excess with my pliers, push down that tail. that down as close as I can get to the wrapped part. You might have to hold on to everything because otherwise this is going to try to spin around. So I'm holding on to the loop on the opposite side and holding, letting this loop rest against my finger while I push down that little tip. There we go. Check it out, make sure there's nothing sticking out there. Nice. Now I just wanna make sure that both of my loops are going in the same direction. This one's going slightly up and this one's going to the side. So I just grab both loops and give them a little bit of a twist until they're both going the same direction. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna go on to my next set of beads that I'm going to use to make my little necklace. And that's going to be one of these lovely glass pearls and two of these little pearls. So this is about four millimeters. These are about four, three to four millimeters is good. And then this eight to 10 millimeters, that's what I'm doing. You can make them bigger or smaller if you like, entirely up to you. So now again, I need to determine how my measurement, measure, put the beads on. Let's go ahead and do that. If you don't want to leave your wire intact and you actually do want to measure, then go ahead and put your beads on. Grab your ruler after you get your beads on. Measure how long, how much space those beads take up, which in this case is almost the same as my rhombus bead, about five eighths of an inch. And then I'm going to add um, an inch and a half. I'm going to say three quarters of an inch on each side. Again, I said it's between five, uh, between half an inch and one inch. So I'm going to add three quarters of an inch on each side, which is an inch and a half, plus the five eighths, which would be two and an eighth inches. We'll just say two and a quarter inches um, if I were to um, measure that way. So I'm going to go ahead and just slide those down. I'm going to give myself my three quarters of an inch. Bend it back. I would not suggest leaving the beads on because it's kind of hard to juggle all of that. So I would take the beads off to make my loop, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide my wire down. Where am I on the camera here? I'm gonna slide my wire down about a third of the way down my pliers again, bring that little short tail over the top and down the side of my pliers. Till I can't go any more any further without going over both barrels, which I don't want to do. I'm going to open up my pliers, reposition them until the pliers are on top, the wires down the side, and I have a little T formation here. Then I'm going to bring my short tail of wire under the pliers until I have my little loop. Now I'm going to bring out my square pliers and make my wrap. Just wrap that around once. Again, I'm following my pliers, staying nice and close to the pliers. Wrap them around once. See how I, how I have to keep making sure the beads don't fall off? That's a pain in the neck. Don't leave your beads on. Okay, wrap that around once and one more time making sure that I 
stay very close to the first wrap and don't wrap down the stem too much. Okay, click that off, that little tip that I don't need. Again, I'm using that black back part. Put that off of there, get rid of that little tail, and grab my flat pliers and push down that little tip. You see my little tip ended up way up here where I don't want it to go. So just take your pliers and squeeze it down. Where is it? Where are you? Here it is. Close to my little wraps. There we go. Push that down so it's not going to snag on anything. You can also use the beads if they're on there. You can use them to kind of push it down. Close to the other wraps, you can just push it that way. Just pulling the beads will make the wire snug its way next to the other wraps. There we go. Nice and snuggly bugly. And now I'm going to make my other loop. So I'm going to bend the wire back close to the top of my beads, grab my round nose pliers, slide the wire down about a third of the way down my pliers. Just like I did on the other side, bring that wire over the top of my pliers and down the side. Oops, put it back on there. Okay, and under the pliers until I have a loop. Now, I don't want to go any further because I need to connect it with my other bead. One of these needs to stay open so that you can connect it to the closed one. So I'm going to take this long tail that I have here, slide it inside the loop, and slide that loop all the way down to the open loop. And then Slide it inside. Focus. There we go. <laughs> Slide it inside the open loop until it's nice, nicely encased. Then I'm going to grab my pliers again. Now, for this, because I have something kind of in the way here, you can use your square pliers or your round pliers. If you use your round pliers, I suggest you go as far down the face of that loop as you can with your pliers so that you don't put any little dents in your wire. Be mindful of the other loop. You don't want to squeeze that close. The only thing you should be holding on to is the face of the loop that you're wrapping. So watch that other loop so that you don't accidentally squeeze it closed. And here I can wrap wrong way. I can wrap my loop. Let's wrap it around once and twice is what I've been doing. And then cut off that tail. There we go. Knit that off nice and close to the wraps. Grab my square pliers and push down that little tail. I have a long little tip on here, so I might need to guide it around a little bit. Let's push it against the, the other wires. And hold on to everything. Again, because if you don't, it's just going to twist around. And you won't be able to push down the little tip because it's running away from you. Okay, there we go. Push it down. Check with my fingers. Make sure there aren't any sticky bits. 
And there's my first link. Okay, now you're seeing what the design of this is starting to look like. Now I'm going to go ahead and attach it to my next shell. Once again, I'm just gonna eyeball it, give myself about three quarters of an inch from the tip, grab my round nose pliers, slide my wire between the barrels about a third of the way down my pliers, make my lip, wrap that around. I'm gonna go ahead and attach it before I put my beads on. Let's go ahead and slide that on there so I don't have to worry about getting to the other side and forgetting somehow that I hadn't attached anything, which I have been known to do. Makes me very unhappy. Makes my uh, participants in the classroom very happy too because they start rapping like crazy and then realize they hadn't attached anything. Oh no. So let's wrap that around. Again, I'm using my pliers as my guide on that first loop. And then bringing that other wrap just below the first wrap, nice and close. There we go. If I need to, I'll squeeze those little ends to get those little wraps together so that they're nice and close. Let's see if I can show you. There's a little bit of space in between, and I'm just going to take the pliers and squeeze them, squeeze those little rungs together. So now, come on, focus for me. Come on, you can do it. There we go. So that now it's nice and tight. I'm going to cut off that little tail that I don't need. I think I can actually hold on to it. Now, if you're able to put your thumb or finger right on the tip, that's fine. But if there's any distance in between the tip, and the wire, I would not put my finger there because it might just, phew, it's like a projectile and it might just find its way into your finger. Not a good idea. So let me go ahead and turn that into my spool, clip that off, push down that tip, nice and snug. Or as I like to say, nice and snuggly buggly. I, I like to entertain myself with my terminology. That is a technical term. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, get that nice and close. There we go. Grab my next shell. Slide it on my wire. And you don't want to have any kinks in your wire because these shells are very finely drilled. So they, you see how I had to really push that to get it over this tiny little 24 gauge wire. You want to make sure there aren't any kinks in it. And the way you can do that is just take your fingers, straighten it out, warms the wire, helps to work hard in it. Best thing in the world. You don't need a special tool for that. Okay, I'm bending. My wire to the side, grab my round nose pliers, and make my loop. And now remember I said you can keep the, keep the pliers in and make a loop. I'm going to show you how to do that. I would suggest doing it the other way. I think you have more control, but if you want to leave your pliers inside the loop to make your wrap, you can do just that. Just be careful that you're paying attention to how you're wrapping. You don't want this to start spinning around because if it does, there's a possibility that the wire is spinning as well and it could snap off just like the stem of an apple core. I mean, of an apple. Okay, so got that wrapped, flip that off. Okay. 
push down that little hip like we've been doing all along. There we go. Uh, it's starting to come along. Let's do the next one. Very, very simple design. Very, very pretty design. This is actually a bead board, but it's got so much going on on the other side. I didn't want to turn it over, so I have to deal with rolling beads. Okay, let's go ahead and do my next one. Oops, slide that down a little bit more. A third of the way, Virginia. A third of the way. There we go. Want to be consistent with my wraps. Partial loop. Attach it. The slide, the closed, closed loop inside the open loop, just like that. Easy peasy. And I grab my pliers, either the round ones or the square ones. Now, again, I want to caution you not to squeeze the closed loop. All, the only thing that you want to come in contact with, with your pliers, is the one that you're wrapping. So slide that down until I have a nice little grip on it. Wrap that tail, short tail wire around the stem, right under the pliers, and then a second wrap right under that first wrap. Okay, and then flip off that little tip. Flat side against the rungs. And double check, make sure you don't have anything in there that shouldn't be there because you don't wanna cut the wrong piece of wire. Okay, turn that down, boom. And push down that little tip. And there we go. Put my beads on, I'm same, same pattern as the other one. I'm doing the tiny one. The larger one. So in my case, I think I've got four, eight, and four, or it's three, eight, and four, and I think you either, you'll either have three, Eight and and uh, three or four, ten and three and three. Oh, ah. You'll just have two different sizes if you get kits of pearl beads that you can use to make one of your links. Bending back, round those pliers, third of the way down my pliers with the wire, wire over the top and down the side, reposition my pliers, clamp down, and there we go. Now I'm going to stop because the next place I need to go is to attach this to my chain. And no, that's not the whole piece because I've already started over here. So first things first, let's go ahead and attach this to the rest of my piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide that closed loop down the stem of my wire and inside the open loop, grab my pliers, slide them down the face of my open loop, wrap that tail around two times, just like I've been doing with the others. Consistency is key. And trim off that little Excess. Okay, snip that off. Push down the tail. Little tip there.
nice and close. The test. Let's see it just a little bit sticking up. There we go. And I need to attach to the chain now. So I'm going to take this long stem that I have here. I don't need all of this, obviously. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it down to about three quarters of an inch, like I had with all of the rest. Get rid of that piece that I have there. Did you notice that I had less than a foot of of yard of um, wire and wrapped four different lengths, and I still ended up with three inches. Amazing. Let's slide my chain, take my chain, just like I did when I was attaching my links, and I'm going to slide the last link in my chain down that tail of wire and inside, let's go really close here. So I slide it down the tail. Make sure you get the last link. Oh, that's my thing saying, Hi, you're fine. It's, it's currently almost up. Okay. All right, slide that last link down the tail of my wire. And inside that open loop, come on, focus, please, 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 please. I'm gonna pull this away. Come on, come on, come on, there we go. Slide it down and inside the open loop. There we go. And this is why I said to try to make sure that your link loop is close to the same size as your chain loop. So it doesn't, it's not jarring to see that chain connected to the wire. They look as close to the same as possible. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the face of my loop with my pliers, wrap that tail around, the bottom of my loop two times. Trim off that tail. I can get it a little closer. Oh, and another thing, when you're trimming this down, I see people, at this piece, I see people going to trim off their wire and going like this. Don't do that, don't, don't do that. Because if you do, you're gonna end up with a little bit piece of wire and you're going to be trying to push it down and it's gonna be hard to do that. You want it to be straight. And then you want to guide the direction you want it to go. Now, my challenge here is I need to find out where the little tip is. There it is. There's my little tip. I'm going to go in and trim it down a little bit closer. And you can see I've got that little tiny tip there. Cut that off. We have my square pliers and push down that little end. There we go. Do the finger check. Here it is. There we 
to see a little bit of it sticking up. There we go. Nice. And here is my necklace. Now we're breeze. Isn't that pretty? Let's bring that back a little bit so you can get a better look at what we're seeing. Ready. Now all I need to do is put on my clasp. So let's just do that, shall we? Again, you can make this as long as you want. I'm probably going to cut this off because I want mine. I'm trying it on to fit me right there at the top of my picture. So I am going to cut mine down. You need to cut it the length that you want. Put it on yourself, try it on, take a picture, see how it looks, see, decide where you want it to go and cut it that way. So I'm going to cut mine down so that I have approximately 18 inches, which is pretty standard. 18 to 20 inches is a standard length. I'm going to give myself six inches on each side. That's 12. And then this part is about six, I believe. Yeah, that's going to be about 18 inches. By the time I put the clasp on, That'll uh, take it up to about 19 inches. So I'm going to cut it down to six. Double check. Make sure that's what I want. I'm just trying it on myself. Yes. That is about right. I'm going to cut one down to six inches on each side of chain. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to take my pliers. Now, you can do this one of two ways. It depends on if you're not getting chain from me. It depends on the kind of chain that you have and how strong your cutters are. You can just cut one side of the loop. Just grab one side of the loop. Focus, 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 please. There we go. And clip. And I always put my finger over it because the little pieces can go flying. Clip that off, or you can. I'm just going to measure the two chains together to determine where to cut. Or you can, again, measure your chain and see where to go. There's several ways you can do this. Or I can take a piece of wire. And I can slide that wire into the loop, last loop on my beads, and then the last loop on the other side. And then hold it down. <laughs> Come on, work with me. Hold it down. And that will tell me how long the other side should be. Just hold it straight down until I'm not doing a good job of showing you. This is easier to show in the classroom because my camera doesn't have a lot of distance. Anyway, I'm holding my two loops. And now I know where to cut. There's the end of my my other chain and I'm going to cut it. And I would suggest if you're not 100% sure that you've got the measurement right, find where you wanna cut and cut it a couple of lengths longer and then you can make an adjustment if you need to. So there we go, there's my, there's where I should cut my last link. So I'm gonna grab that link that I'm gonna cut 
Now, again, you can cut one side of your link. That's the easiest way. Or you can cut through both. If you have some nice, strong cutters, you can just slide it down and cut through both sides of the link. Again, put your hand over it so that you don't have flying links. And there we go. Get rid of those pieces. Make sure everything looks even. Yes, nice. And now all I need to do is grab a couple of jump rings and my lobster clasp and hook everything together. So proper way to open a lobster clasp. And people ask me what size lobster clasps? It depends. Some stores have more variety than others. I would probably stick to um, six, seven, or eight millimeter if they tell on the package what size they are. Sometimes they don't, so it's hard to tell. You don't want it to be too tiny. Four millimeter would be nice, but it's hard to find. So I would probably go with five, six, seven, or eight at the most. Eight is pretty big. I'd stick with five, six, and seven if you can find it in your store. Okay, so the proper way to open a jump ring is to find the opening. Here's the split right here. Put my pliers on one side, and then I can take my finger. See, there's my little split. Take my finger on the other side and just push down until it's open. Wait, why isn't it opening? Ugh, it's hard to open. Let's go to the other side and try that. It may be overlapping. And that may be why it, that's it. It's overlapping. So there's my little split. Pliers on one side, thumb on the other side, and push. And that's not working. So we'll go to we'll go to the second way to do it, which is to have your pliers on one side a second pair of pliers on the other side, and twist. Now, one of the reasons that that may not have worked the first time with my thumb is that this is pretty small, and it doesn't have a lot, I didn't have a lot of leverage. Or it could be that this is dyed, and maybe some of the dye got, made it stick together. I don't know. I have a nice open jump ring. I'm gonna slide the last link of my chain inside my jump ring, just like that. And then I'm going to take my lobster clasp and I'm gonna slide that little ring inside the jump ring, just like that. Then I'm gonna close everything up. Just gonna twist it closed, either with your finger and your, your pliers or with two pairs of pliers. I'll show you the two player method on the next one. Make sure that this is firmly closed and flush together because you don't want to risk having an opening that your lobster clasp can slide through. So there's the one side. Let's go to the other side. Again, I'm going to use the two player method as I was failed so dismally on the thumb and plier method, method the last time. Okay, there's my little split, pliers on one side, pliers on the other side, give it a twist, open jump ring, slide my open jump ring, my chain inside the open jump ring, loop just like that, oh, oops, it ran away from me. Let's try that again. Okay, last link in my chain. Focusing, focusing. Sliding that down into my jump ring. Focus. 
focus, 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 focus. Oh, it really doesn't want to. There we go. I think it's trying and struggling to get there. There we go. And then I just need to twist it closed or said I was going to show you the two flyer method. Flyers on each side of the opening again. And twist. Twist it closed. Hard to see. Oh, come on, please. Trying to teach here. All right, and come on, please, please work with me. Why isn't it focusing? I do not know. Okay. I think that's, that's good. I don't understand. I don't understand this newfangled camera and why it doesn't want to focus. I think that is as good as it's going to get. Okay. I am closing up my jump ring. Making sure it's nice and close. And closed. I want those edges flush together. And I use the fingernail tip um, trick. If I can't get my fingernail through the opening, I'm calling it a win. There we go. And we have a necklace. Open up my jump rings, my, I mean my lobster clasp, and slide it in my jump ring. And there we go. There's my necklace. There it is. Nice. There it is. There's my necklace. Let's put it on a form so you can see what it looks like. Isn't that pretty? And I have all different colors of these shells that I'm giving you. I mean, all different colors. I have, they're all dyed, of course. I have purple and blue and pink. And what other colors do I have? Green. I mean, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful colors. So I hope that you will be happy with what you get. But let me go ahead and put this on a form and show it to you. Hold on just a moment. There it is. There is my necklace. Ooh, I love it. And I cannot wait to wear it. Simplicity itself. Mother of pearl, rhombus shells, glass pearls, little mini three, mil three or four millimeter pearls is all you need to put this together. In fact, you don't even have to use this. It's a very, very simple um, design. It's just something that I can put on with a t-shirt and it'll look really pretty. In fact, I think I'm going to put it on and show you what it looks like with my t-shirt on. <laughs> there it is. Simplicity itself. I love it. So this is our program for today. I hope that you liked it. I hope that you'll do something like this, just something really easy and simple that you can put together in not too much time. It takes me longer because I'm trying to show you how to do it. But I hope that you will make some of these and 
wear them to your heart's content. I know I'm going to. I really am going to enjoy this. This is very pretty. It's not very heavy, and I think it'll go with just about anything. I kept to neutrals on mine. Um, so it, it should get, and you know me, I usually like bright colors, so it's kind of weird. But anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this. Please let me know one way or the other. You can get in contact with me on the DeKalb County Library Facebook page. That's, that's facebook.com slash DeKalb Library, spelled D-E-K-A-L-B-L-I-B-R-A-R-Y. Or you can drop me a comment on the um, YouTube page, which is youtube.com slash DeKalb Library. Um, if you go to the Facebook page, you can post pictures uh, in the comments of what you make, which I love to see and would love to see from you. And you'll be able to see others if they post their pictures there too. So, um, or you can uh, just, just, you can't post pictures as far as I know on YouTube. I've not seen anywhere that you can post a picture in the comments, but you can leave me a comment or you can send a comment and slash or a picture to my email, which is jewelrygen20 at gmail.com. That's J-E-W-E-L-R-Y. had a brain aneurysm for a second. J-E-W-E-L-R-Y-G-I-N-2-0 at gmail.com. Or that information is also in the... Um, the synopsis or the description of the YouTube page. So you'll be able to see that and send me any pictures or any comments that you would like to the um, Gmail. Anyway, until the, uh, until I, we meet again, have a great week and a great weekend. And I hope you enjoyed this and we'll come back until then. I will see you later. Bye-bye.